In this video, we will review the functionality and usage of the Timberline Touch Panel. The version we are reviewing today is 9.0.0.4. On the Timberline Touch Panel, there are four main components. The thermostat, the diesel heat, the electric heat, as well as the hot water button. The first thing that we're going to look at is how to set the thermostat. When you're setting the thermostat, you have two options. You can either drag from the bottom left side of the blue circle, or you can use the plus and minus buttons to set an exact temperature. On the screen, you will see two different temperatures. The one that is closest to the blue semicircle is the temperature that you are setting on the thermostat. This can range anywhere from 60 to 90 degrees. The temperature that you see shown at the bottom of the circle is the reading of the air sensor. This is usually the temperature of the air inside your coach or whatever vehicle the Timberline is installed on. Now that we've learned how to use the thermostat, the next thing we want to do is know how to use the diesel burner and the electric element. You will find the diesel icon on the bottom left side of the touch panel. When pressed, the icon will turn red. This is to indicate that the diesel burner is now engaged. When the burner icon is selected, the diesel heater will run and keep the coolant hot and ready for hot water and heat. The heater will cycle on and off, maintaining the temperature of the coolant in the system. Now once you want heat inside your RV, you'll set the thermostat to your desired temperature and select the burner icon. Once both are selected, the fans will start to run on high until the interior temperatures start to reach the target on the thermostat. Once closer, the fans will then automatically slow down and remain on low levels, maintaining the temperature selected. The same principles apply for the electric element. The electric element itself is a 120 volt, 5000 BTU element that sits inside the Timberline tank. For most manufacturers, the electric will not work unless plugged into shore power, unless otherwise specified. When plugged into shore power, you can click the bottom right button to engage the electric element. Once engaged, the element will start to create heat for the coach. If you are looking to create continuous hot water using the Timberline, you need to select the diesel burner on the bottom left. This is because the diesel burner is capable of putting out 17,000 BTUs of heat. While the electric element is capable of 5,000 BTUs of heat, this is not enough to create continuous hot water. For the majority of people, you will just need to have the diesel selected to create hot water. The 17,000 BTUs is more than enough to keep up with the call for continuous hot water. If you're plugged into shore power and you want the best performance the Timberline offers, you can turn on both the diesel and the electric element to create an output of 22,000 BTUs. When both the burner and the element icons are selected, the Timberline automatically prioritizes using heat from the electric element. We program the Timberline this way to prioritize using the element so that it will minimize the usage of diesel by the burner. If there is a greater heating demand on the system, the diesel burner will automatically engage, picking up where the element left off. On the top left side of the touch panel, you will find the hot water icon. When selected, the hot water icon will prioritize creating hot water over creating heat. The hot water icon separates what we call the summer loop and the winter loop. Imagine it's June and it's 70 degrees outside. You want to take a hot shower, but you don't want to heat up the coach. So what do you do? This is where the hot water icon comes into play. When your burner is selected as well as your hot water icon, the Timberline will prioritize creating hot water without heating up the coach. When creating hot water, you need to make sure that the thermostat is not set to any temperature. This is because if the thermostat is set to a temperature, the fans will come on, thus heating up the coach. So if you're trying to create hot water without heating the coach, just make sure only the hot water icon and the diesel icon are selected. I'm going to pull up this diagram 
to give a little bit of a better understanding and a visualization of the system itself. The glycol starts in the expansion tank. This is where the electric element sits. The glycol then goes to the circulation pump where it is pumped into the diesel heater. Here at the diesel heater, it is our primary heat source at 17,000 BTUs. From the heater, the glycol goes to the heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is where your cold domestic water comes in and your hot water comes out. This is where all your hot water for your showers and your sinks is created. The hot glycol then goes from the heat exchanger to the solenoid. Imagine your solenoid as a closed gate. When you want to heat the coach, the solenoid stays closed and goes to the cabin fans. The cabin fans will then heat the coach to whatever your thermostat is set at. Now if it's a summer loop, imagine the glycol gets to the solenoid. The solenoid then opens up its gate and allows the glycol to flow through, thus bypassing the cabin fans and creating our summer loop. At its core, a winter loop means creating hot water and heating the coach, while the summer loop means heating hot water without heating the coach itself. The last thing that I want to go over is the settings button in the top right portion of the screen. When you open the settings, the first screen that you should see is the display settings. On this screen, you can adjust the brightness to your likeness of how dim or bright you want the screen. Sleep mode is whether you want the screen to stay on at all times or whether you want it to time out and turn off. The timeout is just adjusting how long you want the screen to stay on before it shuts off. The next screen you will open is the fan speed and coolant pump. On this screen you have four settings, fan auto mode, fan manual mode, fan power, and pump override. The fan auto mode is the default mode for how the fans operate. The Timberline will take control and regulate the fan speeds in accordance to what your thermostat is set at and the temperature inside the coach. As your temperature inside the coach gets closer to the set thermostat temperature, then the fans start to turn down. If you're far away from the set temperature and it's cold inside the van, the fans will ramp up onto high mode. In fan manual mode, you can select the power that you want the fans to be at. Now the fans will not stay on all the time, they will only stay on when the thermostat is calling for heat to catch up with the temperature inside the van. But in fan manual mode, you can choose if the fans are 20, 40, 60, 80, or 100% when they are running. That will stay constant. And the pump override button is mainly for technician use. What the pump override does is if a part has been pulled out of the system for servicing, it can purge any air out of the glycol. Most end customers do not have a use for this button. Like I said before, it is mainly for technician use. The next screen that you'll open is the clock screen with two options, show clock and sleep and set up time. If you check the show clock in sleep, the clock will show up when the heater is in timeout mode. The other option is set up time. To set the time, you will rotate clockwise. As you rotate, the hours will change on the clock. If you need to change the day from Sunday or Monday, continue to rotate the clock through the hours so that it changes days. When you're done setting the hours, you can tap the minutes and set the time accordingly. In this software version, only a 24 hour clock is available. The next screen that you'll open is the service information screen. This screen is full of temperatures as well as showing what in the system is engaged or not engaged. The first temperature that you'll see is the air temp. This is just how hot or how cold the temperature is inside of your coach. The tank temperature is how hot it is inside the tank where the electric element sits. The heater temperature is how hot the glycol is inside the heater. As well as the heat exchange is how hot where the water is going across. The bottom four are showing whether that part of the system is engaged or not. The circulation pump is what pushes glycol through the entire timberline system. This is the one that will be on almost all the time. 
The solenoid is the closed and open gate that we showed earlier in the diagram. This turns on and off depending on your usage of the system and whether or not you're creating hot water. The fuel pump sits outside next to the heater. It is what is pulling diesel from the diesel tank and feeding it to the burner. This will always be on depending on if your heater is turned on. The element relay is telling you whether or not you have activated the 1500 watt electric element. As a side note, the temperatures on this screen get all the way up to 194 degrees Fahrenheit. This is nothing to worry about and it is actually normal operating temperatures. The next screen you'll open is the limitation of heating duration. Essentially, these two timers are how long you want the domestic water and the system to run. Now when you have the burner icon and the water icon enabled, you are creating hot water. What this timer does is allow you to set 30 minutes to an infinite amount of time before the system shuts down. So if you have the timer set for 30 minutes, the Timberline system will turn itself off after those 30 minutes. Similarly, if you have it set to infinite, the system will not turn off the hot water until you unselect the water icon and the heater icon. In the same fashion, the system timer operates the same as the domestic water timer. When your burner or element is on, it will stay on forever until you turn it off. If your system timer is set to the minimum one hour, the Timberline system will shut off after it has ran for an hour. And the last screen on the Timberline system is the system information. On this screen, we have the firmware versions for the heater, the control box, and the panel, as well as we have a running count of total heater hours that the heater has been engaged. The heater that we've been reviewing today is 23.1.2.9. The control box is 26.0.1.13, as well as the panel version is 9.0.0.4. And that wraps up our review of the Timberline system for today. If you ever have any questions or troubleshooting regarding the Timberline system, tap the middle button on your screen and what will pop up is our contact information. Shoot us an email or give us a call and we'll be more than happy to help you out.